Amazon just signed their third SpaceX contract for Kuiper satellites. Despite Jeff Bezos spending $10 billion specifically to avoid depending on Elon Musk's rockets. Here's what's really happening. While Falcon 9 launches every 2.7 days with 99% success, ULA has a 70 mission backlog and Blue Origin's new Glenn still can't get off the ground. But there's something deeper here that most people are missing. Let's dive right in. Let's start with the harsh reality Amazon is facing right now. They committed $10 billion to launch 3,232 Kuiper satellites, with 1,618 needing orbit by July 2026 to keep their FCC license. Here's what they thought would happen versus what's actually happening. Amazon secured 83 rocket launches, 47 with ULA, 18 with Ariane Space, 12 with Blue Origin's New Glenn, and initially just three with SpaceX. The strategy was clear, avoid dependence on their biggest competitor at all costs. But here's where the engineering reality shattered their plan. ULA's Atlas V and Vulcan cost roughly $110 million per launch compared to Falcon 9's $62 million. Yet cost isn't even the real problem anymore. Think of it like this. You're building a skyscraper with a strict deadline. Your chosen concrete supplier promises delivery but can only manage one truck monthly. Meanwhile, your competitor's supplier delivers three trucks weekly. Price becomes meaningless when your entire project hangs in the balance. And here's what few people realize about SpaceX's current performance. Falcon 9 launches every 2.7 days with a 99.43% success rate across 523 total missions. That's not just impressive. It's operating in a completely different reality than Amazon's chosen partners. ULA carries a crushing backlog of over 70 missions. Worse yet, 24 of these are priority military launches that automatically bump commercial clients like Amazon down the queue. When national security calls, Amazon waits. The second ULA Kuiper launch tells this story perfectly. Scheduled for early June 2025, weather delays hit first. Then on June 16th, just before liftoff, an engineering issue emerged. Elevated purge temperature in the booster's gaseous nitrogen line. The technical team couldn't resolve it in time. ULA CEO Tori Bruno later admitted it needed more evaluation before setting a new date. The mission finally launched June 23rd, nearly a month behind schedule. One delay might seem manageable, but Amazon needs 47 ULA launches before July 2026. We'll come back to this timeline crunch, but first let's examine Amazon's other partners. Ariane Space presents an even starker picture. Their Ariane 6 has launched exactly twice since debut in July 2024. They're targeting just five missions for all of 2025, with long-term goals of 9 to 10 launches annually by 2027. Here's the math that should terrify Amazon. Kuiper needs 18 Ariane missions meaning roughly six launches yearly starting 2026. That assumes perfect execution with zero delays, something no rocket has ever achieved. Blue Origin's new Glenn adds the biggest uncertainty. As of July 28th, they remain stuck in module testing with launch dates continuously slipping. This rocket was supposed to handle 12 Kuiper missions, potentially expanding to 27 if things went well. But there's a detail most people overlook that makes this situation even more critical. Meanwhile, Amazon's Kirkland facility operates like a satellite factory, producing up to five units daily, over 1,800 annually at full capacity. The production line is dramatically outpacing launch capability, creating a growing warehouse of expensive satellites waiting for rides to space. And here's what's truly remarkable about Amazon's SpaceX relationship. They've been requesting brand new Falcon 9 boosters for each Kuiper launch instead of SpaceX's proven reuse rockets. This deliberate choice inflates costs from $62 million to potentially $90 plus million per mission. Why would Amazon intentionally pay more? The answer reveals something fascinating about corporate psychology and competitive dynamics that we'll explore next. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how this technical crisis exposed a strategic checkmate that SpaceX never intended to create. This launch crisis didn't happen overnight. It's the culmination of strategic decisions made years ago that are now colliding with physics and economics 
in devastating ways for Amazon. Back in 2022, something unprecedented happened in corporate America. The Cleveland Bakers and Teamsters Pension Fund actually sued Amazon, claiming the company violated its fiduciary duty to shareholders. Their accusation? Amazon deliberately excluded SpaceX from Kuiper launch considerations, despite SpaceX being the cheapest and most capable option available. The lawsuit alleged that Amazon never even evaluated SpaceX. Think about that. A $10 billion project where the company refused to consider the industry's most successful launch provider. The pension fund pointed directly to the long rivalry between the two companies' founders as the reason. And here's what makes this story even more dramatic the financial pressure behind these decisions. ULA's parent company, Boeing, reported a catastrophic $10.7 billion operating loss in 2024, with profit margins plummeting to negative 6.1%. These weren't just bad quarterly results. They represented a fundamental crisis that severely limited Boeing's ability to support ULA financially. The ripple effects are now visible everywhere. Boeing is actively seeking to sell ULA, with Blue Origin and Sierra Space as potential buyers. But here's the irony. Blue Origin might end up owning ULA while still being unable to launch their own rockets on schedule. ULA's individual finances paint an even starker picture. Company profits crashed from $650 million in 2016 to just $80 million by 2023. While 2025 projects improvement to $320 million from 12 planned launches that's still less than half their 2016 performance. This financial strain directly translates to Amazon's timeline problems. ULA CEO Tori Bruno publicly acknowledged that national security payloads frequently delay because they are exquisite technology and about half end up needing to move right and they move right by a lot. Translation. When the Pentagon calls, Amazon's commercial satellites wait indefinitely the Pentagon's response has been predictable and devastating for ULA's commercial prospects. They're increasingly turning to SpaceX for missions originally assigned to ULA, including recent GPS satellite deployments. SpaceX's ability to maintain high launch frequency while meeting strict military requirements has made them the preferred choice for time-sensitive national security missions. But there's something deeper happening here that most analysts completely miss. SpaceX didn't set out to create this monopolistic situation. Their focus on reusability, rapid turnaround, and cost reduction was about making space access affordable, not controlling it. Yet these innovations created a competitive advantage so overwhelming that even a $10 billion project backed by one of the world's richest individuals cannot avoid dependence on their services. Consider these numbers that tell the real story. SpaceX completed 138 launches in 2024 and targets 170 for 2025. ULA managed eight missions in 2022 and just three in 2023. This isn't just superior execution, it's operating in completely different categories of capability. The competitive gap extends beyond frequency to payload capacity and cost efficiency. When NASA needed to launch the Viper rover to the moon, they selected Falcon Heavy over ULA's Vulcan for both Griffin Missions 1 and 2. Falcon Heavy's 63.8-ton payload capacity to low-Earth orbit dwarfs Vulcan's 27.2 tons, while costing 90 to 150 million compared to Vulcan's 100 to 200 plus million range. And here's the most telling detail. These aren't isolated incidents. The same pattern appears across NASA's Artemis program, military satellite deployments, and now commercial constellations. Even projects specifically designed to reduce SpaceX dependence find themselves requiring SpaceX capabilities to meet critical deadlines. This creates what economists call a network effect. The more essential SpaceX becomes, the more revenue they generate to fund further development, making them even more essential. It's a self-reinforcing cycle that competitors cannot break through traditional business strategies. And here's why this changes everything. Amazon's predicament isn't unique. It's a preview of the new reality every major space project will face in the coming decade. We're witnessing something unprecedented in modern business, a situation where competitive rivalry becomes irrelevant in the face of operational necessity. Amazon's Kuiper crisis represents the moment when market dynamics shift from competition to dependency. 
based on current trajectories, Amazon faces an unavoidable reality check. They will almost certainly need to request an FCC deadline extension and fundamentally restructure their launch strategy. The mathematics are unforgiving and getting worse each month. Here's the timeline that should concern every Amazon shareholder. ULA can realistically manage perhaps one to two Kuiper missions over the next 12 months due to their military backlog prioritization. Ariane Space won't meaningfully contribute until 2026 at earliest, and Blue Origin's New Glenn remains indefinitely grounded in testing phases. Meanwhile, Amazon's satellite production continues at full speed. Every day of launch delays means more expensive hardware, sitting in warehouses, burning cash with no revenue generation potential. The most probable scenario involves Amazon quietly securing additional Falcon 9 contracts while publicly maintaining support for their original launch partners. But here's what's truly noteworthy about this emerging dynamic. ULA's planned second vertical integration facility at Cape Canaveral might eventually help by dedicating government launches to one facility and commercial missions to another. However, this infrastructure improvement won't meaningfully impact Amazon's 2026 FCC deadline. The construction timeline alone extends beyond their critical milestones. And there's a psychological element here that reveals something profound about modern corporate strategy. SpaceX's dominance creates a paradox that extends far beyond launch services. The more successful SpaceX becomes, the more essential their services become for rival projects, generating revenue that funds even more advanced capabilities. This creates a competitive moat that traditional business strategies cannot overcome. We're seeing this pattern replicated across the entire space industry. NASA relies on SpaceX for crew transportation, despite developing alternative systems. The Pentagon increasingly depends on Falcon 9 for critical national security missions. International space agencies book SpaceX launches when their own rockets face delays. The technical gap continues expanding rather than narrowing. While competitors struggle with basic reliability and launch frequency, SpaceX advances towards Starship operations, potentially offering 100-plus tons payload capacity at dramatically lower per kilogram costs than any current alternative. For Amazon specifically, the path forward requires acknowledging a reality that Jeff Bezos probably never imagined when launching this $10 billion initiative. The alternative, missing FCC deadlines and facing potential spectrum license consequences, poses existential risks to the entire Kuiper investment. But here's what makes this story even more compelling. We're not just watching Amazon's satellite crisis. We're witnessing the emergence of SpaceX as essential infrastructure for the space economy. Industry-wide implications suggest we're entering an era where SpaceX's launch capabilities function more like critical infrastructure than competitive services. Think about how cloud computing providers became essential even for companies building competing platforms. Amazon Web Services hosts competitors' websites because reliability and scale matter more than corporate rivalry. The same dynamic is now playing out in space access. Companies can develop alternative rockets, invest billions in competing launch systems, and maintain strategic independence goals. But when deadlines matter and mission success is non-negotiable, Falcon 9 becomes the only viable option. This raises a fascinating question about the future of space commerce. What happens when one company effectively controls access to space for most commercial and government missions? Amazon's Kuiper predicament offers our first comprehensive glimpse of that future. The answer appears to be both simple and profound. Even your biggest competitors become your customers when physics, economics, and operational reality leave no alternative. The long-term implications extend far beyond satellite constellations. As humanity expands into space-based manufacturing, lunar resource extraction, and Mars exploration, whoever controls reliable, cost-effective launch access controls the gateway to humanity's space-based future. Amazon thought they could spend $10 billion to avoid this dependency. Instead, they've provided the most expensive proof that in the new space economy, some competitive advantages transcend traditional business rivalry. When you need to reach space on schedule and within budget, there's only one phone number that guarantees results. That's the reality Jeff Bezos is waking up to, and it's the reality every space venture will face in the decade ahead. This is exactly why Amazon's $10 billion gamble reveals the most important shift in modern space exploration.
We've moved beyond the era of multiple viable launch providers to a reality where operational excellence trumps everything else. What this means for the future of space commerce is profound. When even Jeff Bezos, who literally founded a rocket company to avoid this exact scenario, has no choice but to rely on SpaceX, we're witnessing the emergence of space infrastructure that functions like essential utilities rather than competitive services. This connects to something much bigger than satellite constellations. Every future space venture, lunar mining operations, Mars missions, orbital manufacturing, will face the same dependency reality. The company that masters reliable, cost-effective space access doesn't just win market share. They control the gateway to humanity's expansion beyond Earth. And this is just the beginning. SpaceX's Starship development promises 100-plus ton payloads at revolutionary cost, while their competitors still struggle with basic reliability. The gap isn't narrowing. It's widening into something approaching monopolistic control over space access. But here's what's fascinating. This wasn't planned dominance. It emerged from pure operational excellence, creating competitive advantages so overwhelming that even designed to avoid SpaceX projects cannot escape dependency. How do you think this will reshape space exploration over the next decade? Will other companies find ways to compete, or are we looking at permanent SpaceX dominance and launch services? This is Space Corps, and we dive deep into the breakthrough moments that define our spacefaring future. If you want more analysis on how these industry shifts impact humanity's expansion beyond Earth, you know where to find us. The space economy is being rewritten in real time, and Amazon's crisis is just the opening chapter.